You think now? My mind. Are you sure? Yes. How do you know? Because it says live. I don't see anything live on the... There's somebody watching. There's somebody watching already. already. Oh, yes. we are live. Oh, We're Brett, live. we are live. I know. Jeez. Brett, come on. we got a show to do. Oh, my gosh. What are you doing? I'm trying to leave sleeping on the job. I was trying to get a good <laughs> view of our alligators over here, yep. and Leave decided to take a nap. Gotcha. Us. But well, Gator Boy is up there. I see Gator Boy there. His eyes are there. Digital friends, it is so good to see you this Wednesday morning. We're coming to you live from the North Carolina Zoo in Asheboro, North Carolina, right smack dab in the heart of the state. And we're so glad you tuned in with us today. We're going to talk about animal lookalikes, animal wildlife kind of stuff that is, what do you say, twinning? Twinning. Hashtag twinning. twinning. We ha I was told we hashtag today. Oh, my gosh. We hashtag? Tagged? Hashtag. Tug? What do we do? We can't. What? What do we ha We hash. It's hashtagged. We hashtagged. Yes. Not tug. Okay. Oh, my gosh. All right. So, so we hashtagged twinning today. We're going to talk about things that look alike in the wildlife out there and maybe help you figure out some of the confusion and why it's there. But thank you so much for tuning in today. Steve will be in front of the camera along with Megan. You'll meet her in a minute. And who's behind the camera today? It's Brett once again. Brett behind the camera. <laughs> and we'll, we'll, we're going to start with, let's not start with the alligator. Let's come back to the alligators. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. All right. Let's start with, uh, let's go turtles and tortoises. Okay. Let's go turtles and tortoises. Well, hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Doing great. Thank you. So, keep your Stephanie's students in reserve. Hey, how's everything going? <laughs> so, animals twinning. Twinning. <laughs> it's hard to say, especially on this. It's cold here today. Now, some of you are going, yeah, right, still cold. It's 44 degrees today. We had to redo our entire episode today because of the temperatures. We're going to have a couple live animals. We're doing this and that. It's like, nope. Nope. You got to re gotta adapt. So, we adapted with Biofax today and adapted with Megan. Come on in, Megan. This is Educator Megan. Um, hi. Hi, Megan. <laughs> hi, Educator Megan. Yeah. Okay, hi. <laughs> so turtles and tortoises, a couple ways to tell the difference, but we're gonna focus primarily on the shell because that's what you see easily on many of these animals. So let's do tortoises first. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that I'm, on, uh, I'm angled right. She is just making everybody dizzy right now. Just rotate my Ooh. rotate. Here, I'm gonna just do it this way. Are we are we are we vertical? Get okay, digital good. friends? What are how we how do we look? Is that good or We're bad, good. digital friends? Which way? Sideways or vertically? Can you see it both ways? That's vertical, that's horizontal. Which one's horizontal? <laughs> the phone is not being nice to us. It's today. not being nice to me. There. Bill Gorsi said there. I don't know what there means. Oh well, I'm just gonna keep doing it this way. <laughs> This is fine, right? Well, if they're confused, they will stay the same confused instead of going back and forth yeah. between confusion levels. Now I'm good. Okay, they say yeah. I'm good now. So, awesome. So we'll say they're good. It is so awesome <laughs> to have you all on our team. It's great to have Brett on the team, too. Awesome. <laughs> so, thank you for that. Live. Gotta love it. Um, so. <laughs> no. Not it again. says I can't spin while I'm recording, so I'm just gonna, let's just do it this way. This is fine. <laughs> It is, it is a really good thing. A lot of you have been with us for a while. Those, if you're new, this is not normal. <laughs> so let's talk about the shells of a turtle versus a tortoise. Let's do tortoise first. Tortoises, land-based critters. Tortoises are land-based critters. Their shell looks like this. Dun -dun. You do a great job of holding. You're welcome. Thanks. So see that big dome shape to the shell? That indicates that they are a tortoise. They also have long, thick legs, living again primarily on the land, and typically herbivores. <clears throat> Science word, herbivores. Herbivores eat what, digital friends? Herbivores eat only what? Do, do, do. Is there a good turtle song? Turtle, turtle, turtle. turtle, turtle. 
Herbivores <laughs> eat plants. Oh, yeah. Herbivores eat plants. So this is an example of a tortoise shell, red-footed tortoise. This is an example of a red-footed red tortoise shell. Big dome, those long, those large, thick legs, and herbivorous. They're herbivores. The other is a carnivore. Check this shell out. Megan will show you the shell. Nice shell. <laughs> Thanks. Look how flat. Look at the comparison. It's crazy. Look how flat the turtle shell is compared to the tortoise. That gives you an idea. More dynamic in shape. Hydrodynamic, I guess. More water-based right. is the turtle. So it's flatter. Cuts down on that resistance in the water. This is a common snapping turtle. But you can really see the difference in the shell shape between a tortoise and a turtle. Turtle's legs usually a little more uh, thin, almost not flippers, but they're flipper-like in many instances. Webbed. webbed, yep, webbed toes. And carnivorous. <laughs> Carnivores eat only what? Digital friends. Deanna says meat eaters. Oh, wow, that was cool. How did you figure out the question was coming? Uh, she's, she's psychic. Nice. Good job, Deanna. Yeah. So turtles, primarily carnivores, meat eaters, fish, crustaceans, shrimp, um, bugs. Fingers. Who? Fingers. Fingers. <laughs> Fingers. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> and then the tortoises, again, rounder shell, dome-like shell, herbivores, and those long, thick legs, almost like columns, on the tortoise. Turtle, tortoise. Red-footed tortoise, snapping turtle. That's how I remember them. Another way to remember it, desert tortoise, snapping turtle. Kind of give you an idea where they live, what they might look like. What about this one? Uh... Eastern box turtle, a shell is really domed shaped. Legs and in claws, they're good diggers. So a smidge of a misnomer. A smidge of a misnomer in the box turtle. They have a lot of tortoise characteristics. They don't mind hanging out near water, but do not put them in the water. They cannot swim. Do not. I'm going to save that turtle and put it in the water because he's not, not, no, it's not helping him. Box turtle. Unique lifestyle. Juveniles, meat eaters. As they get older, more of an herbivorous based diet, more of a plant based diet as they get older. Hmm, unique, different. Box turtle. This is not a real box turtle. People might be asking, what's he doing with that? But to give an idea that they can close up completely in their shell, legs and, and head and even the tail would, would close up inside there. Got a hole in there. Yep. And then what you see here is the bone. The turtle's shell is actually made of bone covered in scoots. Fancy science word. Scoots. S-C-U-T-E-S. And a spelling lesson this Wednesday morning. Wow. <laughs> so that's turtles and tortoises. A little bit of a difference. Let's show them Gator Boy while Miss Megan grabs another skull for us. Can they see Gator Boy? Can you all see Gator Boy? Digital friends, there. can you see Gator Boy in there? Gators. Gator. He's a long 10-foot alligator. He weighs just shy of 500 pounds. He's a big boy. He's a big boy. But he's not eating now. They stop eating in the wintertime. As you guys probably know, they are <clears throat> another science. This is all full of science today. Ectothermic. Ecto, outside, or outside of the body, thermic temperature. Ecto, outside, thermic temperature. Their temperature, their body temperature is regulated by the, by the surrounding air or water. People keep asking if he's cold. Cold is relative. Yeah, kind of. Because we don't yeah. know what cold means to an alligator. 
they are their body temperature is going up and down, right? It's going up and down all the time. In the summertime, it's really, really high. In the wintertime, it goes way, way down. Um, our temperature, we feel the temperatures because we have kind of a constant body temperature. So we kind of know what warm and cold means to us. So, but for an alligator, with their body temperature going up and down, it's kind of what it is, right? It's hard to say, are they cold? A bedding man says, yeah, in some way, because a lot of their body functions slow down. Everything kind of slows down as the winters come on. Come on. They're not going to eat. If the body system is slowing down, metabolism is slowing down, if they eat something, they don't digest it, and then it just kind of sits in the stomach, and that's not a good thing either. We had a question. Do they stay outside all year? Uh, I believe mm, that's a great question. I should have, had, I should have asked Stephanie. Uh, I think not. I do think we have a holding area for some of them, um, but this water can be heated. That I know because it won't freeze over. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe the two large gators. We have Gator Boy that you see, and <laughs> what'd you say? Lee was doing. Lee was taking a. Lee was taking a nap on us. She, taking a nap. She's sleeping on the job. If you've got really good eyes, little friends, you might see the shadow of a gator in oh, front. Oh, oh, oh. 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 She's turning. We can oh. see her. You guys, digital oh, friends you are like, can see her a what? little bit. She's in the glary part. Oh, she there, is there under, she goes. There's there a head. There hey. Is. There's Lee. Yay, Yay. Lee. <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> now what? Now, now what do we do? Now, got derpy now, teeth now. now what do we do? <laughs> so I do want you to show the skulls here. I'm going to stand beside you, Megan. Look at these skulls. Actually, I'm going to stand in front of you, Megan, for a second just because... Digital friends, what's the difference in the skull shape of an alligator and a crocodile? Um, the rounded nose. For which? For a crocodile. Or? or? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so the rounded shape is an alligator. The more pointed shape is a crocodile. Check it out. Boom. That's how we roll around here. So. Alligator is on the right or left, digital friends. Everybody, what is it? Alligator on the right or left? If it's more rounded in the alligator, which one is the alligator skull? Right or left? Oh, you're talking about left. Right? Or which one is the alligator? Which one's more rounded? The round one is on the right. On the right, yeah. Exactly. So this is an alligator. More rounded. John says right. Nice. And then left is your crocodile. It always seems backwards to me because this looks like the letter C and this yeah. looks like a letter A, kind of pointing up. So it's always backwards to me. Yeah, I'm gonna have a, I should have had a talk with people who oh, named some, them so many. Someone asked why are they different colors? Why are they different colors? Really, really old, really, really new. <laughs> These are purchased. These are plat. These are replicas. So yeah, yep. so these are not real. Yeah, so older, younger, <laughs> the only difference. A couple other differences, remember we're talking about look-alikes today, animals that look alike but are very, very different, is in the teeth. So if you look here on the alligator's bottom part of the jaw, there's a tooth that's missing. There's a tooth that's kind of missing. You got that, Brett? Yeah. And if I open the mouth, you see that it's there. It's the fourth tooth. One, two, three, four on the bottom jaw. I'm going to bite Megan's tooth. Oh, I missed it. Dang it. I thought I, I thought I had your thumb there, uh -huh. Megan. But on the crocodile, one, two, three, four, it's visible. It's visible when the mouth shuts. So the best way to tell the difference between an alligator or a crocodile is to get as close as you can. No. No, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, don't get, don't, don't get close. <laughs> don't get as close as you can. You said, don't worry about me. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking more at the shape of the skull. The shape of the skull of the alligator, a little bit more round. Crocodile, more pointed. And then you can look, maybe you've got a good, you've maybe got a good phone, or you've got a good camera, binoculars. That fourth tooth on the bottom jaw actually sits, you ready to make them open the mouth yep, again? Ready. Actually sits in a little notch. Can you see that little notch? Yeah. Ooh. And then when it closes, poor Megan's like, do not this get is not working. Me. Okay. <laughs> and then when this mouth closes, that fourth tooth is visible. That's where the notch would be in the crocodile or in the alligator.
Yep. Sound good? We right yep. so far? So far so good? Where would you find them? Animal look-alike. Where would we find them? Yeah, where do you find these animals? You'll find alligators in the New World. You'll find them in North America, Central America, South America. You'll find crocodiles, Australia, Africa, South America, North and into North America. But they're really rare. The American crocodile is really rare. It's only, there's only supposed to be about four or five hundred only in Florida. That sounds about right. So Florida's got a lot of that swamp. Yeah, exactly. Good point. Alligators found all the way up, almost North Carolina, just cresting the border of South Carolina, North Carolina. But then they're found all the way around Louisiana, even up in the Mississippi River sometimes. So they're a coastal. Cro uh, crocodiles, again, found a lot more globally. Alligators only found here in North, Car North America and South America. Great. Thanks for that question. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Nose on top, eyes on top. So when they're swimming, they can hear and see. And you can see that very well in our two alligators, in our two alligators behind us. Eyes on top of the head. Nose on top of the head. Able to breathe and take in some oxygen. See their world around them. Alligators have a ton of really cool senses that we could get into, but this is all about animal lookalikes today. I gotta stay, I gotta stay focused. Gotta stay focused. A couple things as we're getting ready to show our next critters with you. Um, next week, next week, digital friends, kind of a neat week for us. We're gonna be focusing on International Zoo and Aquarium Educator Day. All of us. <laughs> so we're interviewing some of our educators next week about what they do, why they do it. But you have to stay tuned in to around the 25 minute mark. We have a very special guest coming for an interview next week episode. Very special guest coming for an interview next week. So next week is International Zoo Educators Week day is in the middle of the week so we're celebrating megan and brett we're celebrating a lot of our educators here at the north carolina zoo next week uh, and if you've missed any of our episodes don't forget you can see them on youtube the north carolina zoo's youtube channel we also live there and if you're still following along on facebook they live there forever and then the adventures and education page still has a lot of activity still a lot of information and, and programs being uploaded to that group site let's go mammals Let's go mammals. Do you want to go mammals? This? Yes. Uh, sure. Okay. I should have brought a picture, but I think you guys can get a mental picture. So imagine a porcupine. Imagine a porcupine. Let's see what comes to your mind when you think about a porcupine. Snuggly. Snuggly? <laughs> Thank you very much. We have a we have a friend we have a we have a, an in person friend that said a porcupine really are you sure <laughs> what <laughs> snuggly this is educator Megan has a little a unique definition of snuggly okay, so. <laughs> love it that is so much fun so when you're thinking about a porcupine do you think big long quills or short quills you think a really large animal or a small animal right there's options there's things to think about all kinds of differences in that world. We have two different porcupines here at the North Carolina Zoo. We have the African Crested and we have North American porcupines. We think porcupines have quills. Check this out. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. How's that for a quill? It's very long. Three. Quill a modified hair? Mm -hmm. Yep. Very sharp on the tip. Barely focus on it. It's so tiny. Itty bitty little tip. And then it's only secured in the body by a little tiny root. It's not in the body very much. We usually have fun in play, but this is one of those myths I want to make sure that we're all very aware of. Do porcupines shoot their quills? Can this African crested porcupine? shoot that quill at a predator. Dun, 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 dun. What's porcupine music? We didn't, we didn't have any turtle music. We don't have any porcupine music. You should write a song about porcupines. Yes, you should. I, 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 do do that. That. I think you should. Digital friends, song. porcupine song coming. 
Yeah. You heard it. <laughs> we got those. So, no, they cannot shoot their quills. Neither can the North American porcupine, and its quills look like this. Ow! Ah, sorry. Just kidding. Okay. Just kidding. <laughs> look how much smaller. This is a North American porcupine's quills. Much, much smaller. Serve the exact same purpose, however. Protection of the individual. Still a modified hair. Nothing different along those lines. Another really cool difference between the North American porcupine and the African crested porcupine is, can I get you to hold the crested porcupine again, Megan? Mm -hmm. Watch your fingers. Mm -hmm. Is at the tip, the very tip of the North American porcupine's quill is barbed. barbed. It's barbed. Mm -hmm. That means when it goes in, you can't pull it back out. It's got a little barb. It almost like, it's almost like a fish hook. When it goes in, it can't come back out. And that's good for the porcupine, bad for, for the animal, animal <laughs> that got stuck. or person. Because mm. really, the only way to get it back out is to push it all the way through. Ooh, they can Hear it, 10.20 in the morning, <laughs> thinking about it. pushing a porcupine quill all the way through your thumb. Right? Pass. No. Pass. Negative. <laughs> Megan says pass. <laughs> Brett's like negative. Don, but Don says, oh, it looks similar to her hedgehog's quills. Oh, well, thank Ooh. you, Don. <laughs> thank you for that little segue. We're going to run with it and go right to a hedgehog. Ooh, this is obviously it's not a live hedgehog now. This is an animal that used to be one of our animal ambassadors who continues on educating in the education world here at the zoo. This is what the hedgehog quills look like. And the hedgehog quills, they do not come out anywhere near as easy as the porcupine quills do, either North American or African crested. There's no Cape porcupines. There's a lot of different kinds of porcupines out there. There's prehensile tailed. If you want to see a really cute nose, go to a prehensile tailed porcupine. <laughs> they have a very cute very nose. Squishy nose. Very squishy. I think, the, I, think what the, I think what the kids today say is boopable. Oh my gosh. How about that? Did you boop this <laughs> <laughs> um, and these are much, much smaller on the por on the hedgehog. There's an animal called a tenrec, who also has quills similar to this. But again, they're all just modified hairs. They're all just modified hairs. And the belly of all these animals soft. is very soft. Now, huge difference. Hedgehogs, insectivores. This is full of science. It is. You're using a lot of big words yeah. today, too. <laughs> They're insect eaters. They're insect eaters <laughs> is the hedgehog. The porcupines we meant today are actually rodents. Same thing. They're rodents. They're huge rodents. Now, this is a beaver skull, but can you just hold it for a second, Megan? Yeah, got it. You can, the teeth is what gives it away as a rodent. This is a beaver skull. Porcupine skull is similar, especially when it comes to the teeth. Those teeth are constantly growing, continually growing. So by gnawing on trees, gnawing on bones, gnawing on food, they're cutting those teeth back, teeth back and keeping them very, very sharp. Here, the other side. Oh, sorry. Switch, we're switching around. Yay, beautiful. I take directions well. <laughs> so you can see those teeth. Again, this is not a porcupine. This is a beaver, but the same idea. Such as because it was so big, we thought it'd be easy to show you that. And as they open and close their mouth, they're continually to sharpen those teeth. So porcupines, North American, Cape, African crested, uh, prehensile tail, all those porcupines, rodents, hedgehogs, as Don said, very similar in appearance, but they're more insect eater. Whole nother family of animals. Kind of cool. All right. So couple, one more thing before we go on. We got a couple more things to show that are a little, not animal specific, but specific to animals. Uh, tomorrow, uh, another live event coming to you from North Carolina Zoo, uh, probably around the same time. We're going to be planting trees in our polar bear habitat. Uh, is the polar bear going to be off habitat? I think you're supposed to be the replacement for the polar bear with your white. Get it? That was funny. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it is International Polar Bear Week.
one of the things that we're doing for polar bears is planting trees in the North America, in the, in the polar bear habitat. So tune in tomorrow to find out why we're doing it and why climate change is important to us and for having that knowledge, not just in North Carolina, not just in the Arctic, but globally as well. That's tomorrow here at the North Carolina Zoo. Let's do head ornamentation. Oh, uh, we have a question though. Is it the same time tomorrow? I believe so. They were, they were going to be going on at 10 o'clock. Yep. And it'll be uh, some new folks in front of the camera tomorrow. Ooh. So head ornamentation. You look awesome. Jeez. Digital friends, come on. <laughs> Digital friends, really? Give Megan some love. Yay! Give, she needs some okay. love. Give Megan some love. Yes, <laughs> but anyways. So, antlers, horns. Hold them up again, Megan. Okay. Antlers are on which side of Megan's head? That's not exactly what I meant, but that'll work. <laughs> which one are antlers, <laughs> Digital friends? <laughs> which ones are antlers, on the left or the right? Which is left? Not for you, for okay. them. Which one is an antler? Which one is a horn? Left? Left. Oh, yeah. Antler. Yeah, so this this is your antler. Oh, God. This is your really horn. Confusing. This is your antler. This is your horn. Antlers. Antlers. Made exclusively of bone. Made of bone. Now, as they're growing, they're wrapped in a sheath. A lot of blood supply. They're wrapped in like a... You might have heard of antlers in velvet. So they're wrapped in that velvet. It's a skin sheath. And there's a lot of blood supply, and all this is being laid down over time. But the antler itself is made of bone. The horn, this is made of keratin. The same thing your fingernails are made up of, same thing your hair is made up of. So the horn is made of keratin, and it has a bony core inside. So, <laughs> so the sheath, this keratin sheath, kind of sits on that bony core. If we have any hunters in the group, when you hunt and you found a deer and you've got a deer, oftentimes you call it a four point buck or a six or an eight point. That's another difference. The tines of antlers are very present. You can see them very well, you can count them. Horns have one point. They might be spinning and twisting, they might be curling, but one point, no branches, no tines on them. And another easy to different, either way to remember the difference is that antlers, typically only the males, only the boys. Horns, often males and females. Horns, often males and females. So a couple differences in them. Same purpose, defense, protection, but totally different where they come from and how they derive. One exception to antler world in who grows them. In caribou slash reindeer, same animal, in caribou, both the males and the females grow antlers. Just a difference. They live in the far north. Um, watch this. Watch this. Antlers on a, on a male, very, very large, huge on a caribou or uh, on a caribou or a reindeer. But they shed their antlers because they do shed these every year. Another difference, by the way. Antlers are shed every year. Caribou or reindeer shed their antlers, the males, in November into December. Females, a little smaller, but they keep their antlers into January most of the time, defending themselves, their offspring, and their food source. Santa's reindeer are all girls. Just to let you know. Keep them between us. Nobody else will know. Nobody, just, just Facebook and YouTube. And... Oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. cool. <laughs> Only all 5,000 people live. <laughs> <laughs> so antlers and horns look alike, same purpose, different structures, different way that they're built. Last one to share with you before we go off. We're going to talk about venom and poison. Venomous and poisonous, primarily in snakes. Venom and poison, same thing? Venom and poison, same thing? Nope. Not the same thing. Venom. If it bites you and you get sick, venomous. If it bites or stings you and you get sick, stick, and you get sick, venomous. That would be petrification, right? Oh, nice. If you turn into a spit. 
Yes. Like, okay, sorry. <laughs> if, if you bite it or it touches you and you get sick, poisonous. You bite it, you get sick, poisonous. It bites you, stings you, venomous. In snakes, Yeah, yeah, is that right. the right, the right side? Yeah. Brett told me, make sure you show him the right side. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's a little busted. <laughs> it's a little bu busted. <laughs> on, the, on the left hand side here, this is a venomous skull. Can you see those fangs? Venomous skull. And on the right hand side, that is a non venomous skull. But look how the teeth all point backwards. So when they latch on to a prey item, the prey item cannot get away. They're holding on. If the prey item tries to get away, it essentially sticks itself on those teeth. Venomous, non-venomous. But one more thing. To tell them apart, there isn't a way that you and I can really get to easily. There's not a way. There's a lot of stories out there and some things sort of make sense and some things are kind of correct, but not ideal. Here you go. See this little graphic? Non-venomous on top, venomous on the bottom. This can work, but it's not exclusive. You gotta get real close. Yeah, you've got to get real close, and that's a really bad idea. <laughs> that's not a good idea, friends. We don't want you to get bitten. So please, 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 don't say, well, it has a triangle-shaped head. If this has a triangle-shaped head, then it must be a, not, must be a venomous snake. Well, that's not always the case. Some non-venomous snakes have a triangle-ish shaped head. Now in a venomous snake, that's where the venom glands are. But not all animals have, not all venomous snakes have that. Well, it must be the shape of the pupil. No, nope. The most venomous snake in North Carolina, the coral snake, round pupil, smooth shaped head. What? So you can't use this exclusively. Don't rely on this type of information when you're out and about in snake world. And I hope you do get out and about in snake world. This is a little bit more accurate. Uh, who's going to grab it and flip it over and remember which is which? <laughs> Brad is shaking her head vigorously back there. So we can't use this. It's not as cut and dry as we love for it to be. It'd be great if it was that easy, but it's not. So animal lookalikes today. We did alligator, crocodile. Oh, got more of an alligator out. Gator boy. We did alligators and crocodiles today. We did turtles and tortoises, looking primarily at the shape of the shell. We did porcupines. There's different species of porcupines. All, all the porcupines have quills. The quills are much different in shape, however. The African crested porcupine, large, large quills. North American porcupine, small. And the quills are barbed. Talked a little bit about venom and poison and then horns and antlers. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode on animal lookalikes. Again, uh, tomorrow, 10 o'clock-ish, we'll be back with you talking about planting trees and climate change and why we do what we do for our polar bears. Gator Boy realizes that this, we're almost done here today. Um, <coughs> next week, we'll be interviewing our educators, which is exciting, and share some information with you about them as well. Diesel friends, do please stay safe today from today here at the North Carolina Zoo at Ashboro. In front of the camera was Steve and Megan. Megan. I, Megan. I got to remember Megan. Yeah. Who did a great job. And behind the camera was the ever wonderful. Brett. It's still Brett. It's still Brett. Good. Just <laughs> checking. Okay. Just checking. Y'all stay safe. We'll see you maybe tomorrow. And if not then, next week at 10 o'clock. Bye, y'all.